Hello and welcome to Neighborhood Nature. My name is Lisa and I'm a librarian at St. Albert Public Library and my co-host today is Hannah who is an animal biology student at the U of A. This week on Neighborhood Nature we are featuring birds of prey and dragonflies. You might not expect to find birds of prey in your neighborhood and often that's because people forget to look up. They're looking either straight ahead at nature or down on the ground. You can often find birds of prey soaring in large circles over neighborhoods, like the Swainson's hawk. See how the front part of the wing is white and the back part is black? This is a feature characteristic of Swainson's hawks. You can also find hawks on the side of the highways and on country roads. Often they'll be sitting on top of streetlights, but this one seems to have chosen a hay bale instead. The most common hawk you'll see is a red-tailed hawk because of its red tail. And you'll see it soaring up high, and that's what this one's doing right now. It's flying in circles over our neighborhood. If it spots prey, such as a small mammal, it will soar down and grab it with its feet. Birds don't really chew, so when a hawk has caught something, it will swallow it in a few gulps. This is a Swainson's hawk, and it was in a field by a transit station. And now that it's done eating, it will fly over to the lamppost to sit and watch for its next meal. If you have been to Big Lake, you might have seen this bird. It's a northern harrier, and it has a distinctive head shape, a bit like an owl. They often hunt by flying low over fields or marshes, and they have a very distinctive white upper part at the base of their tail. You might not see a northern harrier in your neighborhood. You'd have to go to Big Lake or a marsh to see them, but you would see this kind of hawk, and we think it's either a sharp shin or a cooper's hawk. They look very, very similar, and one way you can tell them apart is by size, but size is very difficult unless you have the two birds side by side. So for now, we're just going to call this a sharp shinned slash cooper's hawk. A common misconception is that bald eagles can only be seen in remote areas and wild areas. But actually, you can see them in your neighborhood. You just have to keep your eyes peeled for them. Most of the time, they'll be flying overhead rather than perching on things. Although I have seen one once that decided to perch next to a school building. We visited the creek this week, and although it was rainy, we did not see any birds of prey. But we did see, however, the results of the ducks nesting. So here we have what we think is a female blue-winged teal. You can see that she's got quite a large batch of ducklings. Now that the ducklings have hatched, the female will lead them around to different sites to feed. We thought there were only 10 ducklings, but oh, out comes number 11. We looked up the mean number of ducklings for a blue-winged teal, and it's 10, so she's got one duckling over the average. The ducklings are very good at following mum. Even when mum changes their mind, they follow behind her. It looks like she's leading them over into the reeds by the side of the creek but she's staying back to keep an eye out. We also saw this bird at the creek. Watch very closely. This bird is a master at camouflage and is also very shy. This is a spotted sandpiper, and we can tell because it does a sort of bobbing motion of its tail as it moves. And in the summer, they have a bright orange beak and lots of contrasting markings on them, but these disappear later in the summer. Now that it's getting a bit warmer out and there are more mosquitoes, we are starting to see more dragonflies in our backyard. We found this one on our back fence. We're not sure what species it is, but we often find it in our backyard. This dragonfly is really large, but others, like this one, are quite small. We usually see smaller yellow and red dragonflies about this size, but this one was unusual. We don't know what type of dragonfly this is, but if anyone knows what type it is, please feel free to leave a comment on our video. Another thing we've been seeing in our backyard are bees, and they really like these chive flowers and onion flowers. We know this is a bumblebee and not a honeybee, because honeybees have very smooth back halves of their body, and bumblebees are very furry over their entire body, pretty much. Those little yellow bumps on the hind legs are where the bee stores pollen, and it looks like it's very full, so this bee must have had a busy morning. If you want to see bees, but you don't have a garden, you can go for a walk and look for patches of clover and you should see some bees. 
Thank you for joining us at Neighborhood Nature, and we will see you next week.